Expedition Overland is proudly presented by General Tire. Anywhere is possible. And in part by Max Tracks. Take the easy way out. Magpul. Hard goods and apparel. Warn. Go prepared. Icon Vehicle Dynamics. Equipped Expedition Outfitters. CBI Off-Road Fabrication. Xventure Trailers. And in association with Toyota. Let's go places. After completing the traditional route to the southern end of the Pan American Highway, we are in convoy, rolling to the first of four ferries that will shuttle us between the inland roads of the Carretera Austral to the southern village of Via O'Higgins. The Carretera Austral, in short, is a government-subsidized road built from necessity to secure Chile's southern borders, but more on that later. The team is ready for a new challenge. Between here and the bottom of the country, there isn't much. The ferry is still there. Just like the Alaskan Highway, the further you get, the less there is, as far as resources and options. From this ferry on, we are committed to the end, some 600 miles to the south. things change down here. I wasn't expecting to get on a ferry, but we made the ferry the last one for the night. So now we're, I mean, we're going straight in now to that Carretera Austral Road. We've been planning this road for a really long time, and we're really excited about exploring this region. And I tell you what, it's like we've just all of a sudden been transplanted back into Alaska. It's very similar, which is the best. Alaska is one of the best places ever. And Patagonia, I'm pretty sure, has Alaska running for the money. So, we're on a ferry, we're gonna get off tonight, find a cool campsite, we're gonna go do this thing. It's some pretty good adventure. All right, here's, here's how it works. So I'm gonna warm up your tortilla, you're gonna start here. Then there is a, there's chicken and steak, feeding yes. the chicken and steak. There's veggies of onions, green peppers, sauteed in olive oil. We got salsa, we have guacamole, and we have refried beans, and we have shredded cheese. A really great dinner done by a river in Patagonia. How awesome is that? How is it, Kurt? How many guys get to do this kind of stuff? This is amazing. We're all gonna sleep well tonight in the rain. Pretty awesome life we've got right now. We wake to a beautiful morning. In a way, it feels like home in the Northwest, except we're 7,000 miles away as the crow flies. Leisurely camp this morning with uh, the potential of a really cool road going forward today. So as we get further in, it's gonna get more and more remote. So it started off as a two lane highway and it dwindles down to something that will be like a really, really rough dirt road. Um, getting down into Port O'Higgins. It's like 600 miles. So because of that, we're just taking some opportunities here because we have a great campsite next to a river to filter water. It's our first time on this trip that we've filtered water, but now it's uh, gonna be economical to do that. We don't have to buy it anymore. We're around good water that we can filter. So we're gonna fill up all our jerrys, fill our X-Venture trailer with 21 gallons of water and we'll be able to carry a bunch of water and uh, not have to be stopping and buying it and dealing with jugs of water and all that stuff. Drinking more coffee. Mm, mm, there you go. Mm -hmm.
A local farmer comes through camp. He has a wagon full of firewood. We all pitch in to offload it. father-in-law we had these like amazing places and you'd look over and look at him and he'd just be standing there just kind of soaking in the moment and something I learned from him is that when you're in moments like this you just kind of have to sit back stop what you're doing and just try to capture that mental picture and soak it in because you don't know I may never be back here again in my life I just want you to know I'm not just a sappy introspective guy that just Need a shoulder to cry on and think about life lessons. Let's go have some fun. Let's do this. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, -uh. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Nothing to see here. So, Kurt, we're looking at a five hour ferry ride on this deal? That's right approximately five hours from the time we uh, depart, but there is like an hour, maybe two hour boarding process too. So we'll have to get down there and see what the schedule is like. We're kind of right on the shoulder season of their schedule from uh, when they start bumping up the summer hours. So we'll really just have to get down there and see. And since we're kind of running a little ahead of schedule, I'm not sure uh, if we'll grab one today or not. Sounds good. Well, let's hope we do. Yes, sir. Let's get down there. We'll plan on roll right into the ferry office since that's priority numero uno. Then we can work on fuel and uh, any other last minute stuff we need. Let's go get tickets for the ferry. Perfect. Arriving at the ferry office, we take note that there is not a ferry at the dock. Hmm. It looks like we have a little time to kill. We got here, there wasn't any ferry outside, so that was kind of a. Uh, uh, a, t a tip off and now we, we're inside and uh, they said there's only one ferry day at 10 o'clock so um, I guess we're gonna wait. Should we go get some fuel on board these things? Yeah! We're gonna probably load everything we got today because as we get on this ferry tomorrow and go further and further and further obviously it's not running all the time so we could run into a fuel problems as we get more remote. As this road dwindles down, the fuel's also gonna get more and more expensive. So we're gonna top off everything. We're gonna fill every jerry can, put it in the XV3, and uh, we should be totally good to go. We got lots of food, lots of fuel, lots of water, ready to rock. It's turned out we have ourselves a down day today. It wasn't planned, but because of the ferry schedule, uh, we get to do a little maintenance today, which is much needed. So we're gonna go over the trailer a little bit again. Uh, we, we've done that, let's see, when was this? I think just when we got into Bolivia, we tightened down the hub nuts on the trailer, so I'm gonna do that again today. Also, we've got a squeal coming out of the back of Rufio, and I need to find that. I think it's coming out of the rear passenger side brake, so we'll take that wheel off and see what we can find there. Well, this isn't the uh, most level ground that we're on, so I'm trying to get my block level here so the jack will be level so this thing doesn't roll off the jack. You know, we don't want anybody to die. Jeff eventually finds that the rear brakes need replaced, something we'll have to resolve at another time. Steve fires up some stakes, while Eric gathers wood for our second attempt at a fire, which we fail at again due to extremely wet wood. Must be Eric working on the fire down there because he's been working on it for about an hour. Jeff and I may have to go help. It's currently 9.43. Uh, it took us a couple hours to get everything sorted and 
all of our projects done. So we got our, it's just normal maintenance, um, but it does take time. It's obviously better to do it now instead of when the problem arises. So that's why, why we do all this now. Steve made a great meal for us. We're gonna hit the sack and know that tomorrow we are good to go with our vehicles. Well hey, done. Hey, very well done. Perfectly seasoned, <clears throat> Mr. Blackie. The two biggest things that we're battling right now in camp are condensation. It's just always wet. It's not raining, like it didn't rain last night, it was clear skies, but you wake up, everything's soaked. And with the temperatures dropping, we're already starting to have batteries having a hard time charging and stuff. Just things become less efficient when it comes to the power. But we're about to get in the trucks and head right down to the ferry because we gotta make sure that we're in line so that we can easily back onto this ferry and uh, not miss our spot. Oh, and that is the volcanoes. This is a five hour ferry. It takes you through a stunning channel that makes the trip go by fast. We are in the queue right now for a five hour ferry ride. Just loading up. I'm rolling on. not all in great shape. Jeff has been hit again with a bug. What's it say, Jeff? Sweet. Just a slight fever. 100.5. 100.5? Yeah. So that's happening again. <laughs> but also again, in a cool place, beautiful country. New things around me I haven't seen before. I'd rather be sick here than sick at home just kind of puts a damper on it. While Jeff struggles inside, Nate is in a fight for his life when Steve nonchalantly offers him death-inducing peanuts due to an allergic allergy that he has to them. Oh, oh. 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 not big. It's just for you, my friend. Mine is the we need peanut. more of that. Oh, wait. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> I was disappointed that he didn't eat them, as I would have finally been able to use an EpiPen on somebody. Oh well, another day perhaps. A quick section of dirt road gets us to the next ferry, running right on schedule. Shut your eyes and you your happy place. I'll loft the smell of Coca-Cola every now and then. <laughs> it's the healing aroma. The healing aroma of Coca-Cola. <laughs> the more open channel is rough due to higher winds which isn't helping Jeff in his condition. All righty, Kurt, where are two next? All right, guys, from here in Bauman South, we're back on land for the next uh, few days. In fact, until we get down to VO Higgins, we're gonna be on the route of seven. And uh, we've got, I don't know, about 600 miles left of driving here. Copy. Wow, it's awesome. Back on the road, the Carretera Austral starts to show its rugged nature. Seemingly just around the corner, an ominous mountain plumes into the clouds. Where's the right there? Oh, it's the perfect spot. <sighs> Look at it. Oh, that is so cool. In 2008, Vulcan Shaitan became active again after laying silent for almost 10,000 years.
The forest around the volcano has been burned from pyroclastic flows and explosions, providing an apocalyptic feel. The dome itself is unstable, and its future is highly unpredictable. Pretty cool road. Drives nice, it's fun to drive. It's got steaming volcanoes, the ocean on the right, to the west. This place is pretty special. I'd have to say that for sure. The Route of Seven is a mix of pavement and dirt. As you approach towns, the pavement kicks in, but not far out of town, the pavement will quickly end again. With every corner, it seems that there is something new that often drops your jaw in awe. If you come here, plan on taking several extra days so that you can hike and see the area. How you doing? Well, you know, I've been better. Um, I think I just slept most of the day. And I'm all sweaty. And stinky. Uh, hopefully this is a quick deal and uh, I wake up brand new tomorrow. Fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> what, Nathan? How's it going? I'm doing great. We're doing good, Nathan. <laughs> Or, uh, sorry, Jeff's down for the count. He's not feeling well, which is a bummer, because he's an important part of the team, getting us down here. So we're down a driver, which means kind of everybody that's awake and feeling good, or isn't doing other jobs, has to be driving all the time, which is all right, but it's gonna wear thin. So we need to recuperate him, get him back to help. Awesome count size, it's a beautiful lake over here that we'll get to see in the morning. It's all dark now. So we're just setting up a little rainy camp and Steve's got some grub cooking over there. We're gonna hurry and get some food on board, get Jeff all situated in bed and climb in ourselves. Call the night. I think my temp this morning is about 98.7, the huge, you know, of, of a healthy person. Still feeling a little tired, a little weak, but I think that fever's gone now hopefully nothing comes back from it hopefully by this afternoon start filling back to normal so the plan for the morning is basically just keep moving um, got in late last night had a kind of a long sleep in which was good all of us woke up 10 minutes to 9 uh, got up had some quick breakfast evaluated Jeff see where he was at and evaluated the weather and the weather started off real nice this morning but now it's already raining again so uh, what we're our plan is if it's raining we're moving so that way we're buying ourselves time when the weather does clear hopefully that we have time to enjoy it and spend time uh, in whatever environment we're in when the weather is nice so might as well be moving if it's raining so that's the plan for the day we'll just kind of see how many miles we can put down today and uh, get deeper into Patagonia here Today we're going to keep continuing down the Karatara Astral, uh, heading south, and our goal is to get to Lago General Carrera, and there's a marble cave boat ride excursion we want to try and make our way out to. Alright guys, we talked early on about the reason the Karatara Astral is here, the Route of Seven, and it had to do a lot with the Beagle Conflict. I'm doing a little reading on the Beagle conflict because I personally didn't know a whole lot about it. But it was a border war between Argentina and Chile. Anyone, anyone here know much about it? Okay, so it was a yeah, border war because there were three islands down in the Tierra del Fuego area that Chile and Argentina were fighting over. The, the international, I guess, agreed that uh, they belonged to Chile, but Argentina exerted dominance over them. So. Chile had to put this road down here in order to defend their borders. Wasn't the Road of Bones built for the same reason? Yeah, I believe so. It was their way of uh, protecting their eastern country, right? That they had to move settlers out there. Road of Bones was like all slave 
labor, labor pretty much. Was this contracted or do you know? It was built by soldiers that up to 10,000 soldiers worked to build this road down through here. Uh, starting in the 70s until its completion in the 2000s down to Omega. Awesome. Well, it's cool to drive it. It sends us straight through some of the prettiest country I've ever seen. Yeah, it's working. Well, it's nice to get out of the trucks and go look at something. A lot of us are mountain guys, and that peak back there is as cool as it gets. I hope we get to see a bunch more of those things. And it's finally in the sun. We're having good weather this morning, so we're just we're just soaking it up. Just look at that, look at that, look at that, look at that. It's, it's awesome. You, if you ever get the chance, you need to come to Patagonia. And we're not even into the thick of it yet. So I'm excited to keep getting out down in there and see what else there is. right into town and this guy walked out and says yeah we'll take you out there this might work out real nice I think he's 45 or something. Oh, I, I guess. It's See that guy in his beard? Yeah, totally. I get but he it. acts like he's 17. But yeah, I never know how old he is. Norby and I are going to try to uh, go to town and get a cake of some sort because that's, that's our tradition. We get cake. Pastoria, Panderia. Perfect. Oh, this is it. Oh, this is it. M money, money, this money. This is it. Bingo. We Got have it. found it. Pound cake. Well, look, it's chocolate. Kurt likes chocolate. Happy birthday, Kurt. We love you. We have cake. The battery energy drink and a Red Bull. A little care package for, for our little Kurtanica. Yeah, it looks pretty level. Can you for a second? Can you come interview for a second? Oh, Happy birthday! You had no clue. Hold on. Oh, you got you gotta be These guys are always surprising me. <laughs> oh, oh man! Oh. Look at that. Hold on. So we know that you like shiny things. Oh yeah, love shiny things. Love shiny things. So we bought we bought you some presents. <laughs> so I'll free I do love Red Bull. And and because we want some local flavor. Whoa, battery acid. <laughs> I'm gonna give that one a try in the morning. Yeah. Put that one in the fridge. Do it now. No, 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 no. Shoot them down. Shoot them down. Oh. So here's here's to our boy Kurt. Happy Kurt. birthday, my friend. Thank you, sir. Happy and birthday, Kurt. To many more. Let's have an amazing adventure together. Let's do it. Cheers. Salute. Salute. Thank you. Salute. Thank you, gentlemen. Salute. It's been a wonderful trip yeah. thus yeah. far. I look forward to seeing it through the end. Mm -hmm. We're prepping here to go out on a boat. Our boat's going to be uh, rolling around behind us. It's this little boat around the corner. But we're going to go out on Lago General Carrera, this beautiful lake behind me here. Go for a boat ride. We're going to go check out some caves an arch, some uh, some really neat hot spots on like four or five different places. You ready, Elson? I think so. I feel slightly special inside my multi-layers of Gore-Tex and wool. And then the, the locals are like in jeans. <laughs> so, all right, come prepared, right? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Work it. Work it. Show me what you're made of. Express. Don't tell Express. Tell me it was worth it. What do you say, Kurt? We're on a boat, on a lake, going to see some caves. That's what we're doing today. I'm loving this coat. Made for fishing boxes and 
stuff, but it's cavernous. Fit a full 5D in there with a 24 to 105 lens in it. Digging it. They're good jackets. The marble caves are located on a peninsula of solid marble, pushing into a remote glacier lake that spans the Chile and Argentina border. And the caves are accessible only by boat, which makes for a great half-day excursion for us before heading on our way to the final ferry of the Carretera Austral. This place is truly magical. I mean, the water is this bright aqua blue. The mountains around you are like something out of a painting. Um, we're seeing these marble caves, which are once in a lifetime opportunity, once only place in the world you can see them. So we're just having a great time uh, out here, checking out the marble caves. Look at that mountain range around us. I know. Holy oh cow. It's not ugly. No. no. I think our goal should be to get close to the ferry tonight, close enough that we can either book tickets or at least know what time they load the ferry tomorrow. Yeah. So that's about 250 kilometers, give or take, so roughly 185 miles. Uh huh. So if we could do that in the next five hours here, five, six hours, while we yeah. got daylight left. The goal to reach the ferry is finalized during this drive. If we are lucky, we'll make the ferry by the end of the day. We are traveling this area in the off season and ferries are at a minimum. At this point, if you wanted to leave this area by car, it would take days. If a ferry is not running for some reason, then one could find himself geographically trapped until they start running again. Yeah, I don't think you are. Samson is the last to load on the boat literally making it on by inches. These guys are on scale. That man knew what he was doing, right? He, he had it down to the final inches. That trailer barely fit it back there. Well, we're almost to the end. This is probably the second to the last ferry that we'll be on on the expedition. I think there's one more before we get into Ushuaia as we cross the Straits of Magellan down there. But I hope I don't have to get back on this ferry because if I'm back on this ferry, that means we were unable to cross the most southern border by vehicle that there is here in Chile into Argentina. As of right now, everything's looking up, but we'll find out. I hope I just don't have to get back on this ferry. We shortly touch ground and set our eyes on the last of the beauty of the Carretera Austral. Villa O'Higgins is not far from here, and our final goals are to locate some fuel, which has been known to be an issue down here. After that, check the box at the very end of the road before linking up with our local contact, Dan. Our research had said that there was very little fuel here. To our surprise, there's a brand new gas station here. Another sign that the Carretera Austral is becoming more and more modern. And he thinks that Jeff is the boss and that Jeff has all the money. So he keeps going to Jeff to make him pay for everything. It's pretty awesome. We're topped off. We got about five miles to go before the end of the road, which is cool, and we can say, hey, we've been to the very bottom of this thing. 
and then we're going to turn around and we're going to make all efforts to get across the border into Argentina tomorrow uh, or the next day depending on what the conditions are like. You look back and you're like, if you wanted to turn around and get out of here, you don't. It's If you were to drive it as hard as you can and you were to time it as best you can with all the ferries, it would take you three days to drive out of here. But you'd have to time everything right. Uh, it took us six to get here, so six or seven. Pretty remote, pretty cool. Great spot on Earth. This mission has one last objective, to reach the very end of the Carretera Austral. kilometers of the car car Austral. Priorities, man. Got to get myself a selfie. Oh, yeah. We made it to the end of the car car Austral, the Route of Seven. We're here in Via O'Higgins, just south of town at the Lago Via O'Higgins, which is the end of the highway. They're actually doing a little construction here behind us, and the road is starting to push a little further south. I don't know how much more it's going to go, but this is the traditional end, 1,247 kilometers later from where we started in Puerto Montt. Uh, four ferry crossings, a lot of dirt roads, a lot of gravel roads, a lot of great camp nights, but we're here. So excited to be to the bottom of it here. Excited. Pumped. <laughs> Super. Uh, it's a long ways down here. Like a really long ways. And it's kind of funny, but you end up in a construction zone where they're building a pier. But obviously the Navy's here. We may or may not have crossed into some Navy territory here. But whatever, yeah, everyone seems to be all smiles, and so am I. This is cool. Missed it, Nate. Sorry, too slow. <laughs> I'm just trying to get my, my ND filters and my F-stops right. Such a nerd. I think I got it. Okay, go ahead, rolling. Sorry, interview's done. I'm done. I'm done. Ready. I'm gonna kill this interview. I could think of a handful of places in Alaska that look just like this, and it's crazy how you go from one end of the world to the other, and it all starts to look the same again, and I find that pretty amazing. So this kind of feels a bit more close to home to me, and I love being here, and it's going to be fun to get onto the Argentina side next, which we're going to do real soon, but drive down's been fun, and it's good to just absorb this moment for a little bit. The Carretera Austral did not disappoint. It's easy to say that it's one of the finest roads to drive in the world. If you're ever in the area, make all efforts to make the journey here. It won't disappoint. In many ways, we think it's the closest thing to how the Alaska Highway was 30 years ago. But don't wait long, it's already changing. Join us next time for the start of our next adventure on Expedition Overland.